Hello and welcome, and a special welcome to all our guests on the, this uh, stage today as we look at a crucial issue, perhaps the most crucial issue facing a young India today, education, equality, quality and quantity. It's an elusive triangle. How can technology provide the answers? Mr. Tata, of course, this landmark, some would say a game changer project launched by Tata Trust, MIT and TIS to provide online quality education to over 1,65,000 students in the initial phases. Why do you think education can transform future generations? I think what we are convening here is, in fact, a very significant movement that we are, we are launching. There have been many occasions that, that I have had feelings within me, and I'm sure many of you have similar experiences where we, we see little young, young men and women, or I should say boys and girls, mostly boys, selling magazines and books at, at red lights. And you look into their eyes and you see great intelligence, brightness, but they don't have a chance to be educated. When they don't have a chance to be educated, they are unemployable because they have no skills. And this is the wealth that we have as a country. And it cannot be marshaled to the extent that it can. We have the strength of a large population, a young population, an entrepreneurial population, well, the one thing that we don't have is the chance of and the ability to be educated. Many of these young, young kids would love to have the chance of having an education, to be able to speak English, to be able to have their place in the sun. And I think that's what we are doing today, and it's it's with the knowledge that has been gained by MIT and its, its particular significance in the educational world and the support of the four state governments, the support of the Human Resource uh, Ministry and the Tata Trust that we put together this program, which over time, I believe, will, will make a significant difference to the young population of India. So I think that's what the vision has been, that those bright eyes and the, and the entrepreneurship that you see around you will be converted into educated young people with an ability to express themselves, the ability to be employed, ability to have a choice of skill, and to make a contribution in the country. Dr. Raif, it's interesting because in India, there's always been, we've always been very proud of brand IIT, and we've had so many Indian students actually uh, studying at MIT as well. What, what drew you to this program? How did you first uh, think about collaborating with it? And You've talked about the challenges as well as the opportunities of online education. What do you see those as specific to India? Well, first of all, let me say that I'm delighted and honored to be here on this stage with, with Mr. Tata and this distinguished panelist that I have near me. And I want to apologize to all of you for my voice. I normally don't have this sexy voice that you hear right now, <laughs> but I'm nursing a cold and this is the best I can do. Uh, I think that when I look at um, all the nations of the world today, I see the tremendous future that India has. Um, I see also a population uh, that is, I understand, uh, less than, uh, more than 50% of the India population is under 25. Mm -hmm. So it's a very young nation, a very promising nation. Uh, in, in my view, the time is now for India. 
but for that time to materialize for the future to come to India. Uh, the tremendous capital that India has is in its population, its human capital. And as Mr. Tata said earlier, the most important uh, component of progress in a nation is its people and is the education in its people. Uh, at MIT, we care deeply about education because it transforms lives. It transforms my own life. So we want to help everyone that wants to be helped and collaborate with us to use education for people, for the well-being of people, to improve their lives, and in so doing, to improve the lives of communities and, and, and therefore the nation. Uh, Mr. Tata, would you uh, like to come in on that? Because it's often said that India lives in many centuries at the same time. And I think uh, just the states that you have tied up with illustrates that because there are different uh, challenges in each state. We've seen India, of course, uh, Kerala has achieved great success. It's now 100% primary education, the first state in India. How will you address the issues of different requirements needed, uh, India country, which as I said, provides, uh, makes uh, Satya Nadella and Sundar Pichai, but also India, a country where getting a basic education for children who sell uh, newspapers on the traffic lights is still an issue. Well, education in a conventional sense of the classroom um, may not be achievable to a large number of, of children. Technology enables this to the reach, the outreach of an education program to be much more feasible. Mm -hmm. And uh, education takes many forms. Uh, this is connected education that can be the more formal form of education, which, which it is addressed to some parts of our population. But the fact is that education, the ability to express oneself in English, the employability that the service uh, economy provides these people. I think it's a collection of different versions of education mm -hmm. that we're looking at. But as responsible citizens, we need to do something, making that effort to to light a spark or to light a fire that may bring daylight to millions of people over time. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Sahu, if you would come in perhaps as a representative of Chhattisgarh. Now, Chhattisgarh has its own extremely difficult challenges that it faces uh, in terms of education uh, with the Naxal issue. There have been some strides made, but a lot more that needs to be done. How would Sa how would technology help you? Does it seem odd when perhaps when you talk about issues like electricity in your schools or getting children safety to schools that we talk about technology as well? You think this can coexist? Yeah, I'm sure they can coexist. In fact, in Chhattisgarh, we have undertaken a slew of measures, innovations, and also uh, certain path-breaking uh, steps, uh, including the now famous uh, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Shiksha Gunbatta Abhiyan. Mm -hmm. which basically envisages uh, community participation, community management, and community-based monitoring of schools. The ultimate ambition or the intention is to improve the quality of the schools. See, as government, we have a responsibility. The government has a responsibility as a welfare state to provide certain services, and these are the very basic of services that are to be provided. I think there is a gap. Uh, we have ensured already access. We have gone a long way in ensuring equity, now we need to focus on quality. So this gap can be filled up by technology. Uh, and I think clicks uh, would do this job wonderfully if the, this gap is uh, addressed. And my point uh, in the context of Chhattisgarh would be being a relatively uh, educationally uh, underprivileged state, uh, the gap is a little large. And uh, the majority of the population being uh, uh, tribal and belonging to tribal dominated areas, they are hardly aware that there is a world beyond them. So in addition to clicks uh, uh, initiated uh, the ICT based uh, interventions, if they're interactive in nature, I think that goes a long way, that will go a long way in ensuring that the child who was earlier restricted in his world view would be now aware of a much larger world that exists beyond his school or beyond his district or state. Mm -hmm. 
I think that itself is a path-breaking initiative. If, if that happens, the child will automatically be curious to know about more and more things in a wider and wider area. I think that's the ultimate objective. It's not just learning by rote. Ms. Saini, if you can come in as uh, well. On some, uh, some of the issues uh, raised, we've seen a recent NCRT survey which pointed to the fact that though over 90% of children are now in school, over for just around 40% are actually learning in the, in the true sense. When we talk about other issues, that we had the ICT program which launched over 10 years now. The success rate in that hasn't been so high because of infrastructural issues, like I pointed out, electricity, computers not being provided, teachers not being adequately equipped. How do you think this can be a game changer? How do you think, do you think we're at the brink of being able to resolve those issues? Uh, yes, we have infrastructural gaps, we have uh, gender disparities, we have uh, difficult terrain and a lot many other things, socio-cultural background and other aspects. But and as I said, uh, the clock has been set ticking. Uh, we are making inroads in all the, we are making a multi-pronged approach to uh, address all these issues. Um, we have integrated our schools. Uh, when we talk about access, uh, it's not about providing the school uh, at the doorstep. It's about providing access to the school. So in order to achieve that, we are trying to integrate our schools so as to provide a better resource base, to provide a, a better use of all the available resources. As we have limited resources, then we should be pooling all our resources for better use. So we have integrated our schools, and uh, Rajasthan is amongst the four runners. Uh, I'm proud to say that, uh, who has gone on the concept of integrating schools and having a schools called other schools from 1 to 12. Adarsh means ideal. And there will be uh, the resource uh, schools for all the other schools in the contiguous area. And gradually we'll be moving to, a, uh, to an era where uh, we'll have other schools uh, as a standalone structure, wherein all the, uh, uh, all the students from the uh, catchment area would be brought in, would be uh, brought through transport voucher or any other transportation related schemes. And uh, all the children ha will have access to better resources, better teachers, better learning and uh, better infrastructure.